This is a video about the books that I'm writing now and that I will be writing in the next year or two. And it's as much a reflection for me as it is information for anybody outside. Uh, right now I'm writing Your Door to Innovation, 100 Models of Innovation, sort of the companion volume to Are You Creative? 60 Models of Creativity. The 100 Models of Innovation are really take your breath away, uh, at least in terms of the other people that I've shown it to who are in industry. Um, they have a freshness to them and an absurdity to them and a simplicity to them and a mundanity to them that indicates a totally fresh view of the world, um, which is really, really uh, flattering to me because uh, that, that was my dream uh, and I did had no hope of really getting out of my own boringness enough in the world's media enough, which I read too much of, to have anything fresh to say. And so the fact that other people who are customers of this information see it as fresh uh, and uh, you can see the vitality as they, they express to me what they got out of the chapter I gave them or the, the material they heard. Uh, that's great. That's thrilling stuff. And then the other book I'm working on is uh, your door to culture power and a hundred tools for handling culture. And this is a write up of the culture course that I started at the University of Chicago and taught at Kansai Gaidai, taught at Kansai Gakuin. And now I've worked on it here at KO and I'll be doing a version in China in 2013. And it, it's really fine. It's, it, you know, it's not everything and there's great stuff by other people that's not in it. But in terms of what it intends to do, it does what it intends to do extremely well. And, uh, and it changes drastically the people's ability to do things with culture and build culture and modify culture but who take the course. So it, it, it's empowering the people. And their attitude is totally revolutionized and their power to get things done is greatly increased by it. And, and that's my dream too. So. Those are working, and uh, quite comfortable about those. I'm not sure what to do next after those two. I'll probably finish both of them by December. So I've got up here on the wall for me to remember uh, 100, uh, 250, uh, 420 natural selection dynamics and 420 uh, Silicon Valley Tech Venture dynamics, uh, which are really writing up interviews of top biologists for the natural selection stuff and interviews with 150 Silicon Valley founders for the other stuff. Uh, the models for those books are done, so writing them would be quite easily. I just go box by box and explain what's there. Um, and the flow among the dynamics is quite breathtaking in that a lot of common thinking about both topics turns out not to be true. So uh, these are very edifying for people who have not read them before. Um, I'm reading a book called uh, Founders of the Game, Game Founders, or Founders at Work Gaming. And it's quite to overlap with the Silicon Valley Founders work. And indeed, I think it's inspired by the woman who wrote that book. Um, so those two might be next. They would be fast and easy to do. Uh, a book on design. I've outlined a huge, good outline. And it's based on my TMCE presentation in Karlsruhe, Germany this year and my pen presentation in Australia this year, and my DRS workshops in Australia this year. So I think that would be a quite good one to work on next year. And then uh, 48 genres of systems design. I really ought to do that before I forget it because it's so complicated and so revolutionary. Uh, most colleges like MIT's SDM and KL's SDM teach one, one of those 48 genres of system design. And many of the faculty have never even thought about or heard of the others and certainly don't have uh, any inkling into what the system's approaches are in the others. And so taking the concept of system away from Jay Forrester and Peter Singe and Stella and Dynamo and second order differential equation solvers and putting it into a more scientific context uh, certainly needs intellectually to be done. And maybe people 100 years from now would see this as a a tremendous book that changed the field. 
Then there's a book called Saving Saviors, which is about how there's great value in most religious practices and mostly evil in most religious belief systems. And so we can extract the value without the evil if we know how to see the difference. And it, it, it handles for educated people the paradox of hating religion and liking religion at the same time. And that's because in most religious practices are really great practical value for every kind of person alive. And in most religious belief systems is great, great evil and, ma and the excuse for mass murder, and uh, which intelligent people throughout history have wanted to avoid it. So uh, getting a framework that tells us where the, to look for the value and where to look for the junk to get rid of is really quite useful. Uh, especially for younger rising generations. Um, then there are 64 things that engineers lack and 64 things that MBAs lack. And I'm thinking of that as one book about the reason that professions are the hiding place for evil in our time. Sort of a methodological treatment of the same point that Hannah Arendt treated in her book Eichmann in Jerusalem, trying to explain McNamara, Harvard, Kennedy, G 800 GRE, Vietnam failure of elites in our time. Uh, I have to be guided, and I've got some other books, uh, 64 Sources of Entrepreneurship, uh, uh, etc. And I've got some more over here listed somewhere. So, um, I need to be guided a little bit by reaction to the existing books I've already written. I've got 14 books listed on scribed.com, and if you look at the numbers of reads and downloads, the number one is brain powers, for intellectual power related to brain modules. That's the hot topic. That's the buzzword. That has twice 1,200 hits compared to 600 for the next two topics. The next two are super selling and 100 methods everybody should know effectiveness. So people are interested in effectiveness. They are interested in super selling at the 600, 600 level in a year. And at the twi twice that 1,200 level, they're interested in brain powers. So this tells me that directly going after effectiveness methods is really what the market wants. Brain effectiveness methods and then selling effectiveness methods and then general work effectiveness methods. Those are the big hitters. And then creativity and all that stuff way down there at 200 instead of 1,200, 200 instead of 600. So the market there appears to be a third of the sales and effectiveness methods market and uh, a sixth of the brain powers, brain effectiveness market. Uh, and then if that guides what I write next, then I will be inventing a whole lot of new methods over the next year and assemble my reading for that. Now, my reading, I've got story science and the narrative methods as a book to do an outline for it. Don't yet have an outline for it. And uh, there's this issue of games and system effects and story types and self-development and the one story that all stories are of Joseph Campbell and these seven types of stories that other people have, and then this executive business, everything about mobilizing people, is story and business book that the key or somebody wrote for his consultancy. So um, that's a set of material I need to turn a great, into a great outline, and then in, after that into a book. I've got the, the books for that over here you see in the background. Um, I need to probably get one or two other totally new to me topics started as book projects. And the way I do that is by assembling the books I have on those areas. I've considered a book on probabilistic thinking and chance, and I've got 200 of the greatest books on that already here. Boy, but it would be such a tremendous amount of changing in my own thinking to deal with that. I thought about a book on happiness, but chance thinking. If I can do a chance brain connection book methods, many probabilistic brain thinking methods, something like that, that might hit that sweet spot that the market is looking for and that would cause me to have to re-educate myself entirely. Uh, but I would have to commit to uh, working out thoroughly some statistical stuff that's really rare and unrealized. 
Uh, Harry Roberts, my mentor, a founder of the American Statistical Association and a founder of the University of Chicago Business School. Uh, he died. Such a loss to me. Uh, such a generous, great mind. And but the two of the last papers in his life were showing that 77% of the work textbook examples in top 10 college MBA program textbooks for statistics were wrong. 77% of the examples in the textbooks were wrong. And wrong, uh, their parameter estimates off by more than 200 to 300% on average. And that this, how could you explain such a, an, a drastic, catastrophic failure of understanding? And his guess was that when statistics moved from agriculture departments to spreadsheets and business schools, the visual feedback that gave you intuitions of what you were doing was lost in those rows of just numbers. And we created idiots who don't really, two generations of professor idiots, one generation of idiot professors not taught in agriculture departments, taught another generation who are now professors teaching a third generation. And so uh, it's just all is lost. It's moronics on the moron. And it's, it's even worse than that because the idiots don't know what they don't know. And then they taught some other people who don't know that the professors they taught them don't know what they don't know. And now they're all teaching utterly false crap as if it's real. And then you end up with these medical journals where 90% of the articles are utterly false. The psychology review where close to 100% of the statistics published in psychology review are utterly false. And, um, and, uh, but it's so institutionalized that uh, you would be resisted uh, to the nail by the top professors in psychology and in medicine because they couldn't afford to admit that they're idiots. And, uh, and they couldn't afford to admit that it doesn't make that much of a bit of a damn difference whether what they publish is true or not. That's the really cat in the bag they don't want to let out of the bag. I don't know how we're going to deal with that. I don't know that it matters um, either because I don't think the, the research those statistics are in is really all that determinative of anything. And um, But uh, that would be a terrifically hard book for me to deal with. And I'd, I'd, there's huge paradigm shaking things at the foundations of all of academia. Uh, but I'm not interested in shaking the foundations of academia at all. I would rather leave them ineffective and let their lack of popularity self extinguish them without me having to do any work at all. And I think the web is finally going to provide people with uh, new publication editors that assemble and map the web for people and guide them to where to get things and get things for them and rewrite them and come repackage them. You know, information reduction, which is what a book is, is not going to go away with the web. There's just this gap period where people who used to go information reduction from books. What is information reduction? I think people need to understand that. Uh, information reduction is if you think that Richard Green reads better than you do, and if you think Richard Green reads better than almost any human being alive, and then if you buy a book by Richard Green on models of creativity, you can trust that reading a thousand pages of that book on models of creativity by Richard Green is going to cover all, all of the essential points in 2,000 other books on creativity. You won't miss a thing from those other books except the entertainment and the fluff. That all the essential ideas will be captured in his book in a coherent framework where they reinforce each other. Now that's the trust you have to have of your personally chosen information reducer. You have to say, this guy's mind, and this guy's use of language, and this guy's nastiness of disposition and skepticism about the value of popular crap, and the ability to poke holes in the pomposities of other people, that all these aspects of this guy are such that if he reads a book and tells me there are three good ideas in the book, and he reads another book and tells me there are 600 good ideas in this book, I really can trust him. He's really, in in general, quite better at this than I am, and I, he's going to save me having to read 200 books or 2,000 books when I read one of his. So that's what we all mean when we talk when we buy a book for information reduction. We mean that we can read one book that of 200 or 2,000 pages that saves us from having to read 200 books of 10,000 pages or 100,000 pages. So. Uh, information reduction is an extraordinarily valuable intellectual function. It's a, it's a major kind of mental productivity. And, uh, 
the web is going to need it because it's this giant bushy thing exponentially getting more bushy and it's getting harder and harder to find what you need. The search engines are not doing a good job. Uh, and there are many, many searches where you just give up because Google generates nothing that's useful. Bing generates nothing that's useful. And you just give up. There's no way these dumb search engines can find what I want. This happens to me every single day. I wanted uh, these uh, bar ends, they're called, on bicycle handlebars that make bicycle handlebars higher or wider for you. And uh, I wanted a particular type of bar end. And I couldn't find them in English. I couldn't find them in Japanese. I couldn't find them anywhere in the world. I know they're there. They're not on Amazon. They're not on Rakuten. Uh, they're not on specialty bicycle parts lists. I've bought them in bicycle shops all over the world, and I can't find them on the web. And I looked for hours yesterday. And, you know, they may be on the web somewhere, but the fact that Google spent hours of my time not finding them, that Rakuten spent all year, Hours of my time not finding them. That Google spent hours of my time not finding them. That Amazon spent hours of my time not finding them. Indicates that the search is not, it's just not working for simple stuff like that. And I had no way to give the context of what around the bar ends that would help make the search, what the search turned up relevant and useful. And so I got this keyword crap of bar ends with Z, you know, a whole couple of hundred pages on alcohol and bars. And steel rod shops of reinforcing steel for building tall buildings and you know just the stupid google going ape shit on the word bars uh we uh we are not making the transition to information reduction on the web because the web is incompetent at the moment um i thought about doing something topical on the web uh but i'm not sure that and i did an interesting thing in one of these videos i called sex wealth and fame 19 seconds long, and I put it up there, and in an hour, I got 23 hits on it, <laughs> which is, for me, a lot, because uh, most of my videos get two hits at the present moment in time because I haven't marketed them. Um, <laughs> that just means on a keyword basis, you put sex, wealth, and fame somewhere, you're going to get a heck of a lot more hits than other people in. Uh, 